One of the things I'd like to go into more is uh, the difference between negative pressure system and a positive pressure system. Um, you can see here my two drawings of, well, there's supposed to be lungs and a heart, and I was going to race this and actually get some legitimate pictures on here, but they kind of rock, so that's not going to happen at all. I'm going to keep it the way it is. So in the middle, we have our heart. He's pretty happy, dude. And you have your lungs. And then right underneath it, you have the huge muscle known as the diaphragm. Whenever you breathe in, think about it. Take a big, deep breath in. What happens to your chest? Your chest wall expands in really in all directions, but mostly in the anterior portion. So your chest wall goes out. Your diaphragm goes down. As it goes down, it creates more volume. It creates more volume, more, more place in the more area in the chest to expand for the little organs and stuff to expand within the chest. And one of the major organs that we have to consider is the superior and the inferior vena cava. Now we'll just draw a little superior vena cava here. Okay, I know it's green. We're used to that being the gallbladder of the GI tract, but for right now it's the superior vena cava. So whenever we breathe in, it allows coronary arteries and the inferior in the I'm sorry the superior vena cava to fill up with blood and enter into the right atrium. The right atrium, I gave this guy a little patch, but the right atrium and the superior vena cava are all interconnected to the type of pressure that's available in the chest. Whenever it's a negative pressure system, which is what you are hopefully breathing right now, you're just breathing in the ambient air, taking a huge deep breath in you're actually creating a negative pressure system which allows your superior vena cava and your right atrium to fill up with blood. And that's a good thing, it's a normal thing. Now, we have to think about the situation when it's not a negative pressure system, when it's a positive pressure system. With a positive pressure system, you're still expanding the volume in the chest, but you're forcing it down. The diaphragm usually allows the, when it, when it descends and the, um, and the chest wall moves outward, it allows more volume to be available in the chest. However, whenever you force air in with a BVM, a bag valve mask, or with CPAP, this is all uh, positive pressure. We're forcing air into a system where normally it's supposed to be negative. Now this is a bad thing because um, remember how the superior vena cava is really happy whenever it's in a negative pressure system because it can fill up with blood when the superior vena cava and the right atrium get the blood um, that it needs then the heart can produce the blood pressure that it's normally used to producing. So if you're normally around 120 over 80 in a negative pressure system, you'll stay 120 over 80. Well, with a positive pressure system, and this is one of the major pitfalls of uh, positive pressure ventilation over a long period of time, uh, what ends up happening is we actually compress on this vessel and on the right atrium because we're shoving pressure into the chest instead of allowing it to, to expand like it's supposed to. And what ends up happening is we end up having, we end up having what's called a decreased cardiac output. When it comes to cardiac output, we measure cardiac output via the blood pressure and the heart rate. That's why whenever you're bagging a patient with a BVM on high flow oxygen, you start noticing their blood pressure and it's not it's not going up, it's in fact starting to come down. Um, in addition to the other signs and symptoms of shock and underlying causes of shock, whether it's hemorrhage from an internal bleed or it's septic uh, from a really bad infection or from burns and displacement of that fluid, it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're already fighting a system that's going down. So what we're doing when we're bagging a patient is we're actually um, making it to where we may expedite that blood pressure going down. That's why you may have paramedics that start giving low pressors or uh, medications that may increase the blood pressure temporarily. Uh, we have different devices to use on patients that can help mitigate this, but for the most part, we're going to keep bagging our patient as best as possible as EMTs and advanced EMTs until we can get them to definitive care. I hope this makes a lot more sense. So, as a review, Negative pressure is normal. Negative pressure is a good thing. It actually means that um, our, su our superior vena cava is going to fill up with uh, blood like it's supposed to, as well as the right atrium. 
positive pressure isn't necessarily a bad thing, but over a, a long enough period of time, it can actually cause signs and symptoms of a decreased cardiac output. So you would expect to see decreased blood pressure. You may or may not see this in the pre-hospital field, depending on how long the patient um, you're gonna, how long you're going to be with the patient and how long it's going to be transported. So um, I hope this was a really good review for you. If you need anything else, you know exactly where to contact me.